Hi there guys, it's Robert, an ambassador for Christ, and as you know where I go, the kingdom goes. Remember, eat the fish and spout the bones for some things you may agree with and some things you may not. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new to the channel, welcome back. It's going to be deep. If you want to catch me on Facebook or WhatsApp, you can. All the information is in the description down below. Now, you know what, right? I've done, a ho I've done a study on the book of Ephesians from chapter 1 to chapter 6 and yesterday chapter 6 is when we concluded our study and it was quite powerful because I was dropping a lot of heavy revelation from uh, um, uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 and onwards speaking about speaking about woo, speaking about angels and all this stuff here the kingdom of darkness the prince of power the prince of the power of the air the principalities the powers and the rules of darkness and it was powerful stuff speaking about the heavenly realms and speaking about you know how god has his kingdom has stood up and how the earth is stood up you know how what, what is balancing the earth and all that sort of stuff it was powerful and i was even speaking about how the angels when when god kicked or um threw Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, how God had to put cherubims round the um, tree of life to guard it because it uh, had to put cherubims there. God didn't put archangels there. He had to put cherubims there. It's going to be a powerful talk. Now, you know what, right? Um, he put cherubims there, obviously, because um, Satan or Lucifer is also a cherubim. So if Satan or Lucifer had his way, he would keep the door open and he would want, he would encourage um, Adam and Eve to eat from the tree of the knowledge of, of um, sorry, he would encourage Adam and Eve to eat from the tree of, tree of life because then they would live forever in a sinful state. So this is the reason why God had to put cherubims there because it's all about authority, it's all about dignities, it's all about rank. All right, it's all about rank. And you can't put um, archangels there against a cherubim because it's a different rank. Because when you go in the heavenly realms, you have seraphims, the burning ones that are above the throne of God. They have cherubims that are holding up the throne of God and all this sort of stuff. It's all about ranks. And obviously the Bible says in Ezekiel tw chapter 28 that Satan is actually the covering angel, the angel that covers. He's the one who covers all the other angels. He is the head angel before he fell. It's a deep revelation. Now, I had a sister that left me a, a quite a, she left me quite a powerful question. And um, I thought I'd address it here before I move on. She was saying how, because I said that, you know, God, uh, angels can't, uh, sorry, archangels can't come up against um, cherubims because they're different ranks. And she said, Oh, but in the book of Revelation, Lu uh, Michael um, casts out Satan and his angels have a fight. And obviously Lucifer loses or Satan loses that battle and he gets cast out of heaven. All right. It's a powerful word. It's all about authority. The reason why um, Michael could do that is a part of prophecy. So there's a time in prophecy where that prophecy has to be fulfilled. And Michael's given authority to be able to do that. See, let me show you something. It's all about authority. It's all about rank. And we need to understand that. Understand this. It's all about legalities and jurisdiction when it comes to things about the heavenly realms and the earth realms. It's going to be a powerful talk. See, angels can't just roll up in the earth and do what they want. They can't just roll up in the earth and start dealing with evil spirits and start to deal with Satan. They can't do that. Why? Jurisdiction and authority. They do not have jurisdiction and they do not have authority to do these sorts of things. See, if angels had authority to do what they want in the earth realm, Satan would have been dealt with as soon as um, he turned up in the Garden of Eden. Because <laughs> angels would have dealt with it. Now, there's a there's a there's a little there's a little conversation in the book of Enoch, right? Now don't don't get me wrong, yeah. Enoch is for me, I'm for me personally, it's not in script, it's not um inspired by God, it's not scripture. If it was scripture, it'd be in the old testament. And it would have been the Hebrew scriptures, which it's not. But I won't go into that. But it's still a good source of information, okay, to give you a kind of like an idea. And I'll go to Enoch, then I'll go to Jude, all right? In the book of Enoch, it speaks about how the angels that sinned, the, the 200 angels, watcher angels that left their heavenly abode and came onto the earth realm and started to cause havoc. It speaks about how uh, Michael, Raphael, Uriel, and Gabriel, they went. They were saying, look at what Shamziel's doing, look what Azazel's doing, look what Tamiel's doing, they're bringing much unrighteousness on the earth. I'm talking about, the, I'm speaking from the book of Enoch here, okay? And they, they, they were perplexed, but they couldn't do nothing. They had to go to God and say, Lord, um, look, look what's happening. 
what shall we do? And God said, okay, bind Shamziel, buy Azazel, bind Azazel, you know, ascribe the sin to them and put them in the, in the desert and put sharp stones on them and, and, you know, make their sons kill each other. That's in the book of Enoch. So what am I saying is that they had to go before the Lord for authority. Okay, they couldn't just do what they want. It doesn't work like that in the earth realm. See, the earth realm was given to humans. We have ultimate authority in the earth realm. When Adam sinned, he gave his authority over to Satan. So Satan has the authority in the earth realm. It's going to be powerful stuff. See, now let's go to the book of Jude. Uh, in the book of Jude, chapter 15. <laughs> there is no Jude chapter 15. Jude is only one chapter. <laughs> but listen to this. It says in Jude chapter... Uh, chapter 1 verse 9 it says yet michael the archangel when con when contending with the devil he disputed over the body of moses durst not bring uh, bring against him a reigning accusation but said the lord rebuke you see let's break it down a bit further see yet I'll, I'll give it i'll break it down it, it, a little bit better for you okay in verse 9 it says yet michael the archangel when contending that word contending means disputing when he was disputing with the devil um he he uh where is it he did, and he was discussing he did not bring any sort of um argument or he didn't accuse the devil he didn't argue with the devil but he said the lord rebuke you see he was under assignment from god to come and get the body of moses and to hide it all right but satan said no you can't take the body of moses and hide it because i have jurisdiction in the earth realm michael you don't Okay, so the body belongs to me. Anybody who dies in the earth realm, it belongs to me. This is before the Lord died, okay? This is before the Lord came and died on a cross for us. At that time, Satan had jurisdiction over the earth realm because of Adam's sin. So when Michael was coming and saying, I'm going to take the body, he said, no, you can't take the body. The body belongs to me. And what happened was that Michael couldn't come with his own authority and start to wrestle with him. No, he was sent on authority or on, or on an assignment from God. This is the reason why he said, the Lord rebuke you. No, I can't rebuke you because I haven't have I have not got the authority to rebuke you because I'm from the heavenly realm. You have jurisdiction over the earthly realm. But the Lord rebuke you because the Lord has total authority. So that's the reason why um, the body of Moses was hidden. The reason why the bo the body of Moses was hidden and Satan didn't know where it was either is because. If Satan knew where the body was hidden, he would have told the children of Israel, they would have dug up the, the body of Moses and they would have worshipped it. The same way they worshipped um, the brazen serpent in the wilderness. When you get to the book of um, in the book of 2 Kings with Hezekiah, they started to worship the brazen serpent. Okay, and they call it Nehushtan. They started to worship an old move of God. Woo, it's a powerful revelation. They started to worship an old move of God, which is past. And they started to worship the instruments of this old move of God. So it became idol worship. So that's what would have happened to the children of Israel if they knew where the body of Moses was. They would have got the body and they would have worshipped it. They would have worshipped that body up to today. Satan knew this. This is the reason why God had to send Michael an assignment with, with a word and with authority to take it from the earth realm. Knowing because obviously Satan's got that jurisdiction. Now it gets powerful, right? See, angels can't, like I said before, angels can't just roll up in the earth realm and do what they want. They have to be sent on assignment. See, if angels could roll up on the earth realm and start to mash things up and break down the devil's kingdom and do this and do that, when they went to crucified jesus the angels would have turned up long time ago and would have killed all of the um all of the centurions and all the all the romans because the bible says in first or second kings with um oh blimey going back um with isaiah and um there's another king that he was with uh i, I don't know you guys might <laughs> you might have to do a reminder i've forgotten what it is but basically what happened is they had 185,000 Assyrian soldiers outside the kingdom of Judah, outside of Jerusalem, and they went to take over Jerusalem. But they um, they, they, they wrote a prayer and they prayed, they went before the Lord, they said, Lord, we have no strength or might against these people, but our, our, but our eyes are upon you. And basically what happened is God sent one angel and one angel killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. One angel, okay, they came on authority because through human prayer and through human intercession, an angel was released, okay? Angels can't roll up in a place and do what they want. This is the reason why when we get to the book of Revelation, Michael is sent on assignment and given authority to deal with Satan and to throw him out of the kingdom of, or out of the second heaven and thrust him out into the earth realm when his seed will be mingled with the, with the seed of men and you're going to get hybrids. But 
That's a whole different... Because what's going to happen is, when Satan, in Revelation chapter 12, I suspect, when Satan gets kicked out of heaven, he's going to lose his heavenly covering, or he's going he's to be disrobed, and he's going to lose his heavenly covering, so, so he can no longer operate in the second heavens. This is what happened to the angels that left their first estate in the book of Jude. The 200 angels left the heavenly estate. They left heaven and came on the earth. They gave, they took off their, their covering. The Bible says that they took off their heavenly covering and they came on the earth realm with a human covering and started to do all manner of craziness. So in the book of Revelation chapter 12, that's what's going to happen. Fallen angels will get thrust out of the, out of the second heaven, the soulless realm where angels and demons reside. What happens where you travel, where you go to sleep? Soulless realm, second heaven. When you're praying, second heaven. When you're praying, you obviously go to the throne room as well. But that's a different revelation. So I'm trying to talk to you guys about jurisdiction. That angels can't do what they want to do. They have to move on assignment. And this is where it gets powerful. See, what happened is when Christ died on the cross, he gave humankind back their authority and their jurisdiction in the earth realm. This is get deeper. This is the reason why God couldn't do nothing on the earth realm. If you look through the Bible, God always had to work through man. God was when God God said to Noah, "Build yourself an ark to the saving of your house." See, God didn't make the ark. See, God always worked through man. He will say to a human, "Do this, do that, get this, get that." He said to Moses, "Here's the Ten Commandments: Build an ark, um, build the uh, the ark of the covenant. Tell the tell the children of Israel this. Tell the children of Israel that." God didn't speak to the children of Israel. God spoke to Moses and Moses was the one who brought the word and he's the one who designed things, the tabernacle. God didn't do nothing. God just said a word. The humans had to manifest that word in this physical realm and make it happen. This is the reason why no one could be our savior. God had to come himself. See, God was sick and tired of using humans. He said, you guys are too slow. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create myself a body as a human, I'll come on the earth realm as a human being. That way, I can do my will in the earth, how I want it, when I want it done, and how I want it done. Just like that, I will bypass all the human beings. And that's what he did. He gave himself, he created a, a, himself a body through Mary, and he indwelt. So, Christ sent the sacrifice, sorry, God sent the sacrifice, but he also indwelt the sacrifice that he sent. Okay, so the almighty God got himself a body, walked on the earth realm, and this is the reason why he was doing all these miracles. I only do what I see the Father doing, and he started speaking like that. So God was moving in these miraculous just like that because it was him walking in the flesh. It's a powerful word. So when Christ, it goes a bit deeper than that, I just kind of brushed over it. But you guys love the deep stuff. I'm deep. Yeah, listen to this. It's powerful, right? Powerful teaching I'm giving you here. You ain't hearing this in no pulpit. You ain't hearing this nowhere. Okay, you're gonna hear it here in this in this type this type of setting here, this type of time now. So, when Christ died on the cross, it was an ultimate sacrifice. And what he did in him dying, he gave back humankind back our authority over the earth realm. I just saw an angel. That's kind of powerful. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Listen, he gave us back our authority in the earth realm. So people, you pray for angels, come help. Oh, I need angels. Listen, you have authority. Satan and demons have power, but they don't have authority, okay? So you have soldiers on the, on, in, the, in the battlefield fighting, but the generals are not fighting. The colonels are not fighting. The rear admirals are not fighting. The soldiers and the infantry are fighting. The generals have authority. So the soldiers have the power, but the generals have the authority, and the generals are the ones who issue instructions, and the soldiers um, follow the instructions and do as they're told. It's the same with demons. They have power. Satan has power. But you have authority. We have authority because we have jurisdiction back over the earth realm. Because we are the kings of the earth and Satan is just a prince. You'll see in the New Testament that he's just called the prince of the power of the air. The prince, the prince, the prince. We are now, the Bible says that we are kings and priests. Kings and priests. It's going to be a deep revelation. See, kingship talks about us ruling on the earth realm from horizontally. Okay, from left to right. That's your kingship. Your priesthood ship is from the ground in the earth realm into the spiritual realm. So king, we're kings and priests. Kings talk about authority and rulership from left to right. Priesthood ship means connection with God and bringing heavenly things to the earth from earth upwards. So it's a cross. You see that? Christ died on a cross. See? You see the cross? Do you get it? This is what happened when Christ died on the cross. He gave us authority, ultimate authority. So the Bible says that we are seated in him in heavenly places. So we have authority over the devil. So we can say to the devil, move, 
Go here. Come out of this place. Come out of this person. Come out of my situation. Come out of my life. I rebuke in the name of Jesus. You have no, no place in my life. Get out right now. And you can do this because you have authority. Demons have power. The power of deception. Satan has power. Prince of the power of the air. But we have authority. It's a deep word. It's a deep word. So when we're expecting angels to roll up, they can only move by or they can only be moved by assignment. So when we're praying, when we're interceding, we pray the Lord, Lord this, Lord that. We're praying in tongues. And when we're doing these things, angels will be released um, because of our prayer. Angels just don't just roll up from nowhere for no reason. You'll find it in the book of the book of Acts when Peter was in prison. Okay, the, the church was praying. God was going to, I mean, um, they, Peter would have got killed if, if the church weren't praying. James got killed because the church was not praying. Because the church did not pray, James got killed. Then the church began to pray and Peter didn't get killed even though Herod wanted to kill him because it pleased the, the crowd. So through prayer, an angel was dispatched and um, delivered Peter from the prison, right? It, this is what happens in the, in the word of God. They're only moved by human beings interceding and talking to the Lord, and God sent angels on assignment. Angels see the wickedness that's going on in the, on the earth, but they can't do nothing. No authority. They've got, they're not on assignment unless we pray, and then God sends them on assignment. It's called authority. It's called, it's called jurisdiction. They have no, so anyway, that's what I'm saying. We've got our kingship, we have the jurisdiction, we have the authority, we are kings and priests. Satan has no more authority, no jurisdiction because we override him. See, demons will give you, or Satan will give you these crazy dreams, alright? These crazy dreams. Override them. I had a dream that I died. That's what Satan put in my dream. Let me tell you something, that's a lie. I override that because I have authority to override that because through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, we are now placed back into kingship. How Adam was in the Garden of Eden and he had authority. Um, let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness, right? So he had the dominion and the authority. God has given that back to us when Christ died on the cross. So we have dominion over the earth. We have dominion over the fishes. We have dominion over the whole earth, the whole earth realm. We have dominion. So we can tell these demons, you have no dominion. Get out. You have no jurisdiction here. Get out. You have no legal authority here. Get out. Satan only has the legal authority over you if you give him that legal authority. It, the powers will come from you. You empower Satan. You empower Satan. How? By giving into the fear, giving into the deception, all oh, these fears, of, I'm really frightened. You know, the devil's attacking me, I'm scared. You're giving him authority over you. Why? Because of what you're talking about. You're scared of the devil. No. Cast that devil out. Take authority over that evil spirit. Anyway, listen, listen. I better stop. Yep, I better stop. Listen, it's Robert and Ambassador for Christ because I could go on for hours. I'm doing a live stream tomorrow. If you're still here, I'm doing a live stream here uh, tomorrow at 11.30. And that's for you guys in the UK. And you guys in America, I'll be doing another um, live stream tomorrow as well about 11 o'clock at night, UK time, which might be about 6 or 7 o'clock US time. All right, so I'll be two, doing two live streams tomorrow. We'll have a chat. Get your questions ready. Get a cup of tea ready and a biscuit and let's have a talk and let's just get down to the nitty gritty of some of these things because you guys need teaching and a lot of you guys are at churches and you're not getting certain teachings so <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to give it to you here. I like this is the deep stuff. This is the understanding kingdoms, how kingdoms work. Why did God do what he did? Why did he say what he said? Why, why did this happen in Old Testament? Why did God do this in the New Testament? Why didn't God preach Death, burial, why did Jesus Christ not preach death, burial, and resurrection? Jesus didn't teach that. Why did Jesus only speak about um, being born again once in, in the whole Bible? It's powerful. <laughs> These are the questions that I did. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Listen, um, like, subscribe, share. Leave a comment down below if you're still here. Could do, if you're still here, look what I've done. I've done another video because I was thinking about you because you, you was unhappy that the, the study on Ephesians has ended. This is Ephesians 6.5 or Ephesians chapter 6 revisited, all right? <laughs> I'll see you guys next video. Have a blessed day, all right? God is awesome. Woo!